Hi, this is Alex Morton, and this is my free online evangelism seminar. Uh, tonight is completely free. There's no ticket to buy or e-ticket to buy. Uh, we only ask for a love offering um, on Cash App, and I'm going to put that in the comments in just a moment so that you can send if you want to give uh, to what I'm doing here uh, with my ministry and with Firebrand Fellowship. You can send to that uh, which is dollar sign capital A lowercase l e x capital M one four one and I'll post that on the comments a little bit later so you can uh, send through Cash App using that dollar sign and those letters. So you may think of divine opportunities as things that happen uh, only from time to time, but divine opportunities happen each and every day. And thank you. Charles, for jumping on. I see you, brother. Um, and I'm really here to equip the body of Christ tonight. I want us to be equipped to go out to preach the gospel, to move in love with the compassion of Christ. And when we speak the truth, we have to speak the truth in love. But I'm going to equip you with tools and keys tonight in recognizing a need and recognizing divine opportunities as they come each and every day. So, but I want what I want to do is help you to uh, excuse me to identify these divine opportunities where God sets you up to share the gospel and to share His love. And I want to turn to two scriptures right off the bat because everything I do, I want to back up with scripture. I want to speak to you from the Word of God. So first, let's turn to Ephesians chapter five, verses fifteen and sixteen. Ephesians chapter five, verses fifteen. And 16 and these scriptures say see then that your walk that you walk circumspectly not as fools but as wise redeeming the time because the days are evil therefore do not be unwise but understand what the will of the Lord is now I went I actually went on to 17 there but the will of the Lord is that we redeem the time here. We redeem the time. We make the most of every opportunity some translations would say here. And how do we do that? We see the need. And I'm going to talk about seeing the need, meeting the need a little bit later. But we need to keep our eyes open. We need to hear the voice of the good shepherd. And the Lord's really been speaking to me this week on hearing his voice. And when I got first got saved, I went through a period of time where a lot of my friends left uh, and walked away from me because they said, you're just too radical, Alex, you know, we don't, you don't smoke the weed anymore, you don't do the drugs anymore, you don't do the, some of the, the things that we do anymore, praise God for that, hallelujah. Uh, I got delivered and, and radically transformed, but in that time, I remember sitting in my room and just praying to God and saying, God, I feel so lonely. Lord, I need a word from you. And in that moment, as I just sat there and I just waited to hear from him, I didn't know what was going to happen, but I believed that God was going to move, that he was going to give me a word, that he was going to speak in some type of way. And what he ended up speaking to me was, I am with you always, even until the end of the earth. And it was such a, a quiet, uh, yet strong word uh, that just moved through my spirit. And I actually heard those words audibly in my mind. Uh, and after hearing that, that was my first encounter, I would say, with the voice of the Lord in such a, in such a way, in such a profound way where it impacted me even within my spirit. So I want us to understand that in developing our relationship with Jesus, we're going to discern his voice. We're going to hear his voice. We're going to know his voice. And Jesus said, my sheep know my voice. So that's the first thing that we need to get if we want to recognize divine opportunities is recognizing his voice. Because when we go through each day and we meet people, we have conversations, um, we go to work, we go to school, we go to these different places. As God speaks, we want to obey him in that moment. Yes, there's times where we're going to say, no, God, not now, not now. And I'm going to tell you a story like that later. Uh, but when God speaks to us, 
If we don't move, we're missing an opportunity, and we may be missing an opportunity to lead someone to the Lord and save them from hellfire. Okay, hallelujah. Kito ramba satarabashi. Oh, thank you, Jesus. So before we really get going, I want to share with you uh, my testimony in a short form, because if I was to tell you my entire testimony, I'd be going on for days, and that's no exaggeration, I'm not joking, uh, you know, my story is just miracle on miracle on miracle, miracle over miracle, you know, it's like that song, A Million Different Miracles, uh, and that's my story, the way that God has shown up time and time again, I just couldn't tell you of all the miracles that have taken place. Hallelujah. Ronnie, thank you for joining. Yes, we really need to know Jesus. We need to know his voice. But anyway, I grew up. Let me go on and begin to tell you about my story before I get into this. And I tell you about the passion that I have, about the zeal that I have to share the word of God, to be an evangelist, to do the work of an evangelist. And yes, I am called to the office of an evangelist. But it's not just for evangelists. Evangelism isn't just for evangelists. It's for all of us. So, I grew up Catholic until I was about 14 years old. My parents used to drag me to church, and I thank them for that now, that I have, uh, or I had a foundation where I learned the Word of God, I learned who God was, I learned who His Son was, I learned about biblical principles, and I had a foundation. But the truth was, my heart was so far from God as a young guy, I rebelled because of a lot of things that were happening uh, behind the scenes and things like that, and I won't go into too much of that right now. If you want to talk to me one-on-one -on -one about some of those experiences and some of the the demonic things that were taking place as a young guy and, and some of the things that tempted me, we could talk about that another time, but the subject, I want to stay on the subject of uh, evangelism tonight. So anyway, you know, my parents left the Catholic Church at 14 years old when I was about 14 years old. And we went to probably five or six other churches that were all different denominations. And what that did was it built me a foundation. But then again, I was so confused as to which one of these is the truth. Which denomination is the truth. And today, um, I go by the Word of God. The Holy Scriptures are infallible. Okay, the Bible that's been given to us. And passed down to us, the Old Testament and New Testament are 100% truth. Don't let anyone tell you that things have been added, things have been taken away. No, it's 100% truth, and we're to believe it as truth. If you believe it as truth, you're going to see every miracle in it manifested in your life and in your ministry. I truly believe that. Um, but anyway, I'm Pentecostal, but what I mean by being Pentecostal is I believe that all the gifts are still operating today. All the five-fold ministry is still operating today. Now, I need to just put that out there. But I was confused after going to all these different churches, going to all these different churches, and when I finally heard the true gospel, uh, it was, wasn't in a church, it was in a Bible study. And I want to I wanna encourage those of you who are having home groups, who are having cell groups, who are having Bible studies in your homes, because the truth is, I don't know when Christianity is going to become illegal. And in many country, countries, it is illegal to be a Christian. It is illegal to practice your faith. In communist countries, but in some that aren't necessarily communist. So those cell groups, those Bible studies, those home meetings are getting you prepared for what it might take place in the future when the churches are shut down. And look what happened with COVID. I actually prophesied that that would happen. I prophesied that the churches would shut down uh, about six to nine months before COVID hit, and that took place just as I said it. And if you want to know, and this is a whole other subject, you want to know someone who's prophetic, watch the prophecies that they release and see if they come to pass. And that's one way to identify a prophetic person. And it's okay, you can be an evangelist and have a prophetic anointing. You can be an evangelist and have an ap apostolic anointing. You can be an apostle and have an evangelistic anointing. God is raising up hybrids. Okay, you, It's not necessarily you just functioning in one aspect, you, but you will function in many different aspects of the Holy Spirit if you open yourself up to that. 
up to those leadings. So isn't it unbelievable that I went to about six different denominations as a young guy, but I had never clearly heard the gospel? I say that I don't, you know what, I don't blame that on the pastors necessarily. I don't blame that on the teachers. I know that Satan had me blinded to the truth in that time. But the confusion comes because I truly believe that the gospel is not being preached like it was. It's being watered down. The gospel is the death, burial, resurrection, and ascension of Jesus Christ. And he's coming back again. Hallelujah. We need to add on that part. We need to add on, okay, because it's in the Bible, but it's being taken out of churches, is that Jesus is coming back. And he's going to take his people, and he's going to go to war with his enemies. And he's not coming back as the lamb. He's coming back as the lion to annihilate his enemies. And I don't, I know I don't want to be on that side. I want to be on his good side, and I hope that you are as well. And this is what evangelism is about, is about God making sons and daughters of those who are lost. He's calling you as a son or a daughter, and he's calling you to reach others and bring them into the kingdom. So, by the way, the only reason I went to that Bible study as a young guy uh, was because there was free pizza promised, and... Uh, what teenager doesn't like pizza, right? Hallelujah. So the other thing I need to tell you is that I encountered the presence of God for the first time in that Bible study. And that's another thing that's missing today, is the Word of God might be there. But if the Holy Spirit isn't being invited in, if the Holy Spirit isn't coming in and causing you to have encounters, isn't causing that Word of God to be deeply implanted, isn't causing the Word of God to be driven home within your spirit, many times it doesn't have the effect that it would if the Holy Spirit was only invited into the church, or invited into the sanctuary, invited into the Bible study. So we need to lay down our agendas, we need to lay down our plans many times, and we need to surrender those plans, surrender those agendas to the Holy Spirit that He can operate and function and do the work that he wants to do at any given moment. So I was saved at about 15 years old, but I didn't fully surrender until about 20 when I was ready to take my own life. And that's when I had a radical, life-changing experience when I was baptized in the Holy Spirit and I was never the same since. Spiritually, I can say that in that moment, uh, of course, I had the Holy Spirit planted, implanted within me, uh, just placed within me at 15 years old. It was a deposit at 15 years old, but at 20, I was completely filled. I began to prophesy and speak in tongues and all those kinds of things that come as a manifestation of the Holy Spirit. Uh, but from 20, so it's from 20 to 26, I walk with the Lord to the fullest. I preached the gospel to whoever would hear it. I became a young preacher traveling around the tri-state area of Pennsylvania, Maryland, uh, Delaware, New Jersey, those, those, uh, different states just preaching wherever I could. Uh, but at about 26, I turned away from the Lord for a number of years and the Lord brought me back to himself by bringing me to, to my knees uh, and I ended up going to prison and giving my life back to Christ, surrendering my life once again. And again, I don't have time to get into all the details of how what happened and what I did. I was selling drugs. I was doing drugs, all kinds of things. And I, I fell back into the darkness. And I tell you, it was a gradual progression of falling back into those things little by little, deeper and deeper. And I tell you, you if you're prideful, if you're, you're overly confident and, you know, I'm this great man of God. I'm this great woman of God. Be confident in who Christ is in you. Don't be confident in and of yourself saying, I'll never fall. I'll never fall to that temptation. I'll never do this. I'll never do that. Because just those little decisions that you make, those little, little uh, errors that you make along the way can lead you down that slope. But now I use those experiences to pull others from the pit to get people delivered from addiction, to get people delivered from demons, to get people healed, saved, and delivered. And God wants to use you in the same way.
Each one of us has our own anointing. Each one of us has a specific anointing and a sp specific call. And you may not be an evangelist, but you can evangelize. I want to encourage you in that once again. So before I start talking about divine opportunities, I want you to understand that you're not uh, always going to walk into a situation where it looks the same. It's not always going to look the same, these divine opportunities, these divine appointments that we have and that God sets us up for. For me, when someone walks past me and just says, hi, that's a perfect opportunity for me to share the gospel. Okay, to me, that's a divine opportunity. It's not one of these mind-blowing things where God sets something up that's just, you know, falling into place, falling right into line. No, but, or lining up, but... If someone says hi to me, if someone says, how are you doing? That's a perfect opportunity for me to share the gospel. I don't need a special situation. I once heard of a of a, a man who was sell, selling real estate, and a guy came in who was just saying, like, what is the solution to all my problems? And just kind of screaming, don't you know the answer? Can't you tell me? Can't you tell me? And the real estate guy, who the real estate agent was a Christian, and after the guy had yelled out 20 times, what is the answer to my problems, the man finally said, Jesus. I don't want to be like that. I want to be a person that comes with the gospel immediately. I want somebody who flows in it. I want to be somebody who flows in it. I want you to be someone who flows in it. Okay, I don't want you to, to evangelize. I want you to just live your life and have that, that type of evangelism just flowing out of you. I want the gospel flowing out of you. I want the Holy Spirit to just be moving upon you and moving through you. Okay, that's what we're talking about tonight. Hearing God's voice, letting the Holy Spirit move. Yes, we all have the Holy Spirit within us, but there's an anointing that builds. There's an anointing that's, that's uh, kind of like a momentum that builds up and just flows. Okay, there's things that stop that flow, like frustration, anger, and confusion. And in those moments where you feel like that, you feel like the flesh is rising up, you need to get yourself in a place where you can relax and speak to God and hear from the Holy Spirit. You know, when someone uh, comes up to me and just says, Hi, how are you? I'm doing so good. Thank you so much. Uh, Jesus just loves you so much. And, you know, you just you just tell them, Jesus loves you so much. Uh, he's the real deal. Jesus is real. Begin to, begin to tell them these simple things, and it starts there. It starts there. Who knows where the conversation is going to go? Who knows if God's going to give you a word of knowledge? Who knows if God's going to have you speak into their life. Who knows if God's going to have you discern a spirit. And I'm going to tell you a story about that a little bit later. But just go as the spirit leads. Move as the spirit leads you. So let me also say don't complicate it. Don't complicate what is simple to do. Sometimes we get in our head. What if the person gets angry with me? What if the person that I'm witnessing to uh, curses me out? What if the person punches me? I'll tell you, 99%, 99.9% of the things that are in your mind, you're imagining, you're having anxiety about, are never going to happen. Okay, yeah, have people gotten upset with me? Uh, sure. No one has ever attacked me. Uh, I've been cursed out a couple of times. But really, if the Lord is with you, you don't need to worry or, or have fear about sharing the Word of God. Um, are you going to get nervous sometimes? Absolutely, but you need to push through it. Because we're looking at things from an eternal perspective. We're looking at things as this person is going to end up one of two places. And we want to see them in heaven. So don't get too up in your head about sharing Jesus. Not every divine opportunity is going to seem like a divine opportunity. There are four things you need to know or you need to do when you're looking for a divine opportunity. Now take these four keys, okay, these four keys that I use when sharing the Word of God, when sharing the Gospel. Number one, be available. This means offering yourself up to God each day and saying, Lord, in whatever way you want to use me, use me. 
Lord, whatever person you lead me to and have me share the gospel with them, Lord, just lead me to that person. Give me the boldness to share the gospel, share the truth in love. Number two, start a conversation. Not too much is going to happen if you don't open your mouth. I mean, Jesus, when he approached the woman at the well in that story, the first thing he did was what? He said, can you get me some water? He said something. He started a conversation. We need to start somewhere, whether it be a compliment. Hey, I like that shirt. I like those shoes. You know, they're really cool. You know, the, the colors and everything. You know, I, I like that. You know, that recently I walked into a Dollar Tree and just said, Hey, I like that ring. It's kind of like mine. And the guy, oh, yeah, what kind of metal is that? And, and then I just said, Brother, Jesus loves you. You know, and I, it didn't really go much further than that, but just getting it in there. I, I uh, witnessed to a guy the other day, and he said, you know, people don't do this anymore, what you're doing. People don't tell people about Jesus anymore. And I'm like, well, I do. There's people out there that still do it, brother. And he was a Christian, and he was encouraged by me saying this to him. He wasn't, he wasn't uh, telling me not to do it. He wasn't discouraging me. He was telling me, wow, you know, people don't even do this anymore. I'm so encouraged by it. And we need to encourage one another. We need to share the gospel. We need to be the light in the darkness. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. So it could be, you know, that conversation could start with, oh, it's a beautiful day, isn't it? It could start with a compliment. It could start with any phrase or statement that you could think of. Make it casual. Make the person feel comfortable. And then hit them with the truth in a loving way. So number three, look for the need. And of course, for each and every person, their greatest need is salvation. But look for a practical need like hunger, like a need of clothing, like if they need a shirt, if they need a jacket, if they need shoes, okay? Uh, bus fare, those types of things. You need a bus token to take that bus, brother. I got you. Here you go. Do you mind if I pray for you real quick? You know, I just want to love on you for a minute. I just want to encourage you for a minute. Those are the types of things that we need to be doing. Have you ever heard the saying, they don't care how much you know until they know how much you care? And that's the truth. If there's a practical need, it's tough to get through to someone when you don't meet that practical need first. Someone's hungry. They haven't eaten all day. They haven't eaten in days, possibly, out there in the streets. And they say, you know what, can you just buy me a slice of pizza? Can you just buy me a cheeseburger down at the McDonald's? And you tell them, sorry, I can't do it, but Jesus loves you. They're going to say, this guy really doesn't care for me. And we need to show how much we care, how much we actually have love for this person before we can give them the gospel at times. Because it makes them more willing to receive it. So I want to tell you a story real quick about uh, a practical application of this and how I applied it in my life. So I used to have these three co-workers not that long ago, and one of them would constantly steal my sunglasses, a nice pair of sunglasses, and he would steal these sunglasses. And of course, I would get frustrated. I would get a little frustrated, and my flesh wanted to do some things, but my spirit man uh, rose up. You know, and that life-giving spirit called the Holy Spirit that's within us will speak to us. And will try to lead us in a different direction. And really it's our choice to submit to the flesh or to submit to the Holy Spirit within us that's leading us. So this man, uh, this, this guy that kept stealing my glasses, what I would do is the next day, and, and really he had the, auda the audacity to say, you know, if you give me $5, I'll give your sunglasses back. And of course I didn't give him any money. But the next day, what I would do many times is, when he gave me my sunglasses back, I would say, you know what, you know what, brother? I know what you did. But I still want to bless you. And I would buy him lunch. I would buy him lunch, I and I would say, I just want to bless you. And I want you to know that this is what the grace of God is like. Because God has forgiven me so much, I forgive you. And I just want to bless you. And I just want to love on you. And then I would say, can I pray for you? And he would let me lay hands on him. And I would pray for him. 
there was another guy that uh, used to try to torment me as well. And the guy uh, one day saw a hole in my pants, in my work pants, and he knelt down. And he looked at the hole in my pants and he said, let me check that out, you know. And he was pl trying to kind of play games and, and, and play around with me. And he looked at the hole and he just ripped it wider, you know. And I ended up having to go home because the hole was so big in my pants that I had to go home from work. But what did I do? I could have frustrated. I could have been frustrated and been full of anger and just cursed them out. But no, I went in to my spirit man, and I began to listen to the Holy Spirit. So the next day I came in, and I said, "You know what? I'm going out for lunch. You want me to pick up uh, something for you? I'll take your money." And I began to do things to bless him, pick up his his lunch order, and uh, you know I've I've done different things for that man as well. To try to bless him. To try to show him the grace of God. You see if we react the way the world reacts. People will just see the world. They'll say you're just like them. You're not any different. You Christians are just the same as everyone else. But see. One day. After loving on these guys. After blessing these guys. After showing these guys what the grace of God was truly about. The harvest came. Because one day when we were all alone at work. It was just me, them, and one other co-worker who was a Christian. And we were working together, and things got slow. And we didn't have to work so hard, and we were just talking to each other. And I began to give them the true gospel, and they actually listened. They received Jesus that day, and they became born again. And why did they become born again? I asked them, what caused you to, to receive Jesus today? They, I said, did the Holy Spirit move on you? And they really didn't even know what the Holy Spirit was, but they felt something. They felt the power of God moving. And they said, you know why we, we knew that this was real? Was because we see you're a true man of God. Because you didn't react the way other people react to us. And the number, or the other thing, the second thing was... Uh, number two, one of the guys had severe allergies and other other problems with sickness. And he said, every couple of months I get really sick. And ever since you prayed for me a few months ago, that type of sickness never came back. And he said, I know this is real, and that's why I received Jesus. You see, when God does miracles, when he moves in our midst, when he manifests himself by his presence, we can't deny him. And I want you to receive Jesus because of his love. And I want you to share Jesus because of what he's done for you. I share Jesus because what of what he's done for me. He brought me out of addiction. He broke the chains off my back. He broke depression. He broke a spirit of suicide. He broke a spirit of death. He broke all the, the, the power of the enemy off of me that wanted to kill me, that wanted to take me out. And he set me upon the rock where he made me stable. He infused me with life. And this is how we see the harvest. We show people the love of God, the grace of God, the compassion of Christ. And that's what draws them. It's the love of Christ that draws them. And believe me, it took a lot of grace and patience dealing with those guys. But I tell you, if you don't have the type of love I'm speaking about in your heart and you're a Christian... Just ask God for more love. Say, God, I need your supernatural love to fill me that I may react in a way that is in line with the Holy Spirit. And if you can't hear God's voice, if it's difficult to discern His voice, if it's, if it's difficult to, to hear His voice, then ask God. Say, God, help me to hear your voice more clearly, and I guarantee that he will allow you to hear him more clearly. He'll teach you how to hear his voice. But you need to make the time to listen. You need to open up your ears. You need to open up your spirit. And begin to watch and listen for him. Number four. And I know that was a long number three. Sorry about that. Hallelujah. Okay, number four. Preach Jesus. Let me say this, not everyone is going to preach in the sense of preaching a sermon. Some of us are going to 
just live out our lives in a way that is pleasing to God, and we're going to preach with our actions, with our uh, with our labors, okay, with our laboring in our jobs or in our school, we're going to walk out that life, that Christian lifestyle where people are going to say something is different about you. But what I would say is don't stop there. When they see that something is different about you, tell them why you're different. Tell them because I live my life to please God and not man. The message Jesus preached was repent, believe, and follow. And I'm going to give you scriptures with that. Okay, Whatever I say, I want to back it up with scripture. Because there's many traditions in the church that have nothing to do with the scriptures. And the scriptures are where we need to take our, our traditions, our true traditions, and the things that we live out, we need to take them from the scriptures. So as Jesus went into Galilee preaching the gospel, he said this in Mark 1.15. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. Romans 10.9 says this, If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And in John 10.27, Jesus said, My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. It's been said that we should preach the gospel and sometimes with words. But as I said, if you're living it out and people see that you're living different than the world, don't stop there. Open your mouth. Share the gospel. Share the love of Christ and his message. By living to serve God and serve people, your life preaches a message. It preaches a sermon. But don't stop there. Every place you go is your mission field. Every place you go. So if it's school, if it's work, if it's the bus station, if it's the 7-Eleven, if it's the gas station, this is your mission field. Some people think the only mission fields are in Africa and Afghanistan and, and Iraq and uh, all these places, China. Yeah, those are mission fields, but so is your own backyard, so is your own town, so is your own community, so is your own territory. It's a mission field, and you're all missionaries. Okay, I'm here to equip the body of Christ. Brothers and sisters, you are a missionary in your own mission field. So rise up, rise up, ask God to empower you in this, and he will. So, this is a question that I get sometimes, and I want to address this. Now, if you say to me, Alex, what if I share the gospel with someone and it goes nowhere? They don't receive Jesus. Am I just wasting my time? Time? Absolutely not. You didn't waste your time at all. In fact, in America, the statistics are, it takes the average American seven times hearing the gospel to receive Jesus. They need to hear the gospel seven times before they receive Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior. Now let's turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 6 and 7. First Corinthians chapter 3, verses 6 and 7. Now Paul is talking here to the Corinthians, the Apostle Paul. In 6 and 7 he says, I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So that neither he who plants is anything, nor he who waters, but God who gives the increase. You see, some plant the seed, some water, and some harvest. Some are the ones who reap the harvest. But God brings the increase. God's the one who makes that seed grow. So don't think that you're something when you are nothing. But you are a son You are a son or a daughter. You are a child of God, a servant of God. But don't think that you yourself can bring the increase is what I'm getting at. God brings the increase. God makes it grow. 
but you be faithful in the labor that you've been called to. So also remember this, and I want to say this real quickly. Also remember there will be times where you share the gospel and you have no idea if the person received Jesus or not. And yes, that's something that at times can torment someone. But you need to give it to God. We are not God. And, you know, there's someone that used to tell me, Alex, I'm just so glad I'm not the one who judges the earth. I'm not the. I'm glad that I'm not Christ because I couldn't make that kind of decision. Thank God that our God is sovereign, that He knows all things, that He is just, that He is perfectly righteous and holy, and He's the one who's qualified to make those kinds of decisions. So I remember quite a few times when I preached the gospel to someone and I didn't know if they received Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior before they went on uh, and passed over into eternity. And two of those people stand out in my mind and I want to share these stories with you tonight because I want you to get an eternal perspective. So one was a Muslim man from Egypt who worked at a diner close by, close to my house. And I used to go in there and share the gospel with him, and he was very resistant toward it. Obviously, he's a Muslim, and the truth is that they flat out don't believe that God had a son. They don't believe in the things of the Bible. They'll say that there's similarities, and there are some similarities, but really it's a totally different, the Quran is a totally different book. It's a totally different religion, and I'll say it's a false religion. Uh, anyone who wants to call me a hater, no, I'm a lover, I love you. Uh, but I hate when people follow false gods that lead them to hell. But anyway, one night, and you know what? First of all, I want to say this. There's different ways to catch your fish, okay? Jesus called the disciples and he said, you're no longer going to be fishermen, but you're going to be fishers of men. And sometimes you got to change the bait. Uh, sometimes people use gospel tracts. Some that you know the pamphlets that you give people and they read them later or they read them even at that moment. Uh, sometimes people speak the gospel. Sometimes people uh, do live feeds like this and preach the gospel. There's all different kinds of ways to evangelize. There's servant evangelism, where you know you could stand on the side of the road and hand out bottles of water on a hot day and just tell people about Jesus as you're giving them the bottle of water. And I'm you know I, I know I'm sparking some ideas here. But this day, I decided, you know, as months went by and this man rejected Christ, uh, I had a pamphlet that was specifically for Muslims. And it said, God has no son on it. And it basically broke down uh, Islam. It started off seeming, seemingly uh, Muslim. But as it went on, it exposed why Allah is a false god and why Christ is the son of God. And how to receive him. Uh, and I love that. I love that track. Tract. So I gave it to him. And he received it. And he looked at it. And he said. God has no son. Yes. This is true. And he took it. Uh, and he read it. I believe he read it later that night. Okay. So anyway. Or, or later the next day. Or whatever it was. I come back about a month later. I walk in the diner. I walk in the front doors and this man is just shining. His face is radiant. He has this light. He has this smile that I've never seen on him before. He has this glow to him. And in my spirit, I know that he received the Lord. But the truth is, I never received an actual verbal confirmation that he received the Lord. I never talked to him and asked him if he received the Lord. Because another month after that, I went into the diner one more time. And as I went into the diner, I sat down and the waitresses told me, uh, did you know so-and-so had a heart attack about a week ago and died in the bathroom? And it just happened to be this man. Now just think about that for a minute. This man, if I did not tell him about Jesus, if I did not give him that track, I would have said, I never told him about Jesus. 
I never told him about Jesus and now he's crossed over to the other side and I know he's probably in hell. I still couldn't say 100% he was in hell because God sometimes will give us chances even at the end like he did with the thief that was crucified next to Jesus. But I could say that I gave him the gospel, I gave him that tract and I saw his face glowing, radiant and I believe I'll see him in heaven. But I can't be 100% sure. But the part that is your duty, that is your job, is to get them the gospel. And God brings the increase and he judges the living and the dead. It's his job to judge, not ours. And now I want to tell you one more story. So I used to have this mechanic. Uh, I had two mechanics working in the same shop at the time. Uh, one I didn't know too well, and one day I went in and I was waiting to get my oil changed, and you know he was just doing his thing with the car, and uh, I was exhausted. It was a long day. I was exhausted at the end of the day, and the Lord began to speak to me. I want you to talk to that man, and He said, I want you to to share the gospel with that man, that mechanic. And I said, No, God. I, I said, I don't know. I said, You know what? I'm tired. I don't feel like sharing the gospel with this guy. And as I said that, the Lord said, I want you to share the gospel with him. This man is going to die. And I began to discern a spirit of death. So I said, God, all right. And I shared the gospel with my mechanic. Uh, and as I shared it with him, I laid it all out there. The Lord led me to just lay it all out there, how he could be saved, how he could be forgiven, the power of the cross, the power of the blood. I laid it all out there and said, you need to ask God to forgive you. And the funny thing was, there was no reaction. The man didn't say anything, but I just knew I needed to tell him. And after I told him, I walked away and he just said, thank you for sharing that with me. About a month passed, I went back to the mechanic shop to get another oil change. And I said, where is so-and-so? I'm not going to say his name. And he said, he passed away. And... God had told me he was going to die. God had spoken to me. He had given me a word of knowledge. And the thing is, I didn't know. And we don't know when we're going to go. We all have an expiration date. Did I know this man was going to pass away? Yes, I had, a, I had an inclination. I had a, uh, a leading on it. But the thing is, we need to get the word of God out there. We need to share the gospel. We need to have an eternal perspective on life. See, so many of us are secure and comfortable in the place that we are right now that we forget there's people dying every day. The lost are perishing. What are we doing about it? And listen, I'm not trying to bring condemnation on anyone because what you have done, if you have shared the gospel up to this point, is you've done your part. You've planted the seed. Sometimes we plant the seed and others water, but God brings the increase. Sometimes we water and then God brings the increase. If you've fallen short, if you've missed the opportunity, if you've missed divine appointments, join the club. We've all missed it. But I'm sharing these tools and these keys with you that you don't miss it. That when that divine opportunity comes, and like I said, it could just be somebody walking up to you and saying, Hi, how, you do how are you doing? And you just tell them, Jesus loves you so much. I just have to tell you that. But I'm praying that tonight God increases your passion and your zeal to see the law saved. Now let me ask you one last question. Do you want the people in your circle of influence to cross over into eternity without hearing the truth? You know, I just had a family member pass away. And the truth is, we don't know. We don't 100% know. But, that person heard the gospel. And like I said, that's our part. That's our part to know, to know that we did it, that we stepped out there, that we shared our faith. 
Now I want to pray for you as we, we get into the part where we're about to close. But I want to pray for you that God increases your boldness. He increases your faith. That he causes you to step out. That he opens your eyes and the spirit to see those divine opportunities as God sets us up. Now let's pray. Father, you've called us to preach the gospel to all nations, to all mankind, Lord. To every creature. So, Lord, I ask you, Lord, to raise up laborers for the harvest fields. The harvest fields are ripe. The harvest fields are white, God. And people are perishing every single day. They don't know Jesus. We know Jesus. We're here right now, Father. I'm here right now to equip the body of Christ. And Lord, break our hearts. This is my simple prayer, Lord. Break our hearts for what breaks yours. Break our hearts for the lost. That as we see those who are out there in the darkness, God, May we be the light of Christ that shatters that darkness. May we be the light of Christ that meets them with the word of God. That has the power to heal, to save, and to deliver. Father, raise up each and every one who has watched this message tonight or who will watch it later. That they may be set on fire, Lord God. To share the full gospel, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. That the power of his blood... By the power of his blood, they could be saved. They could share exactly what's been given to them. Help us not to be comfortable in the place that we are. Help us not to be too comfortable that we're scared to step out and reach others for Jesus. Oh, we thank you, Father. We thank you, Lord God, that your Holy Spirit is moving. Thank you, Jesus, that you're raising up evangelists, that you're raising up people that aren't evangelists, that just want to evangelize, Lord, and help us to remember we don't have to be evangelists to share our faith. We just have to be brothers and sisters, followers of Christ. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Thank you so much for joining me tonight, and if you haven't watched this complete message, go back and please replay it, share it, like it, uh, and if you want to give There'll be a comment uh, where you can give through Cash App. Thank you so much, and thank you for those who support my ministry of Firebrand Fellowship and also supporting. Uh, thank you for supporting myself. God bless you.